In this presentation, I will tell how I assessed the efficacy of online text reconstruction exercises in training students to use explicitly connective premise and conclusion indicators, hereafter referred to as meta discourse markers or MDMs. Of course, there are a large variety of MDMs, but in this case, I was interested only in MDMs which regulate logical flow within short written arguments, or in other words, connect premises and conclusions, or more colloquially stated, beliefs and the reasons for believing them. During my analysis of students' written output, I noted that students often used phrases which indicated premise-conclusion relations implicitly, and this often led to statements of belief without the support of premises or reasons. An example of this is the much overused phrase, I think. The goal of the use of text reconstruction exercises is to lead students to write with more clarity by using more explicitly connective markers like so, therefore, and hence, and fewer implicitly connective markers like I think and in my opinion, at least in cases where such phrases do not carry out other or multiple communicative functions. In this presentation, I will cover the following points briefly. Rationale for use, text reconstruction itself, the method of implementation, measurements, findings, and conclusions. Where I present data, that data represents the average for the nine participants in the study. Individual cases did not always follow the general trends, but with the limited time here, those general trends are sufficient to convey what occurred in most cases. The following are the three research questions that I asked in this study. Regarding question one, I was only interested in determining quantitatively whether participants increased their use of MDMs. I was not concerned with the appropriacy of that use. That was a separate issue I addressed in question two. As for question number two, Novice writers may simply interject MDMs awkwardly without considering the context for their use or because they feel the MDMs are familiar and safe or in an attempt to suggest a logical or causal relationship where none is needed. Whereas skilled writers of argumentative texts use MDMs considered appropriate within their discourse community, and they apply those within structures that may extend across clauses, sentences, and paragraphs to create maximum coherence in their writing. As for question number three, I drew upon participants' expressions of their text reconstruction exercise session experiences during one-on-one -on -one interviews. There is ample justification in the literature for taking this view. Literature shows that novice writers do not use metadiscourse markers with sufficient frequency. They do not use metadiscourse markers with sufficient levels of appropriacy and that the sufficiently frequent and appropriate use of meta-discourse markers used to signpost 
argumentative structure resulted in higher scores, which were a benefit to the students. Text reconstruction exercises belong to a larger family of text manipulation exercises. These include deletion, insertion, substitution, and reordering. In this study, I was primarily interested in web sequiturs, a product which can be downloaded free through the Text Toys website. I was interested in this particular application because of its unique ability to highlight the linear logical flow of argumentative structure. Using the web sequitur generator, a text is cut and pasted into the field and then breaks in the sentences are created by using the enter key. After the text reconstruction exercise is generated, it appears as it does here, with instructions at the top, and below that, an argument which I provided in full, which reads, one indication that the thief came in through the window is that there is a footprint nearby. Students use the multiple choice selection function to construct a nearly identical argument with the logical flow running in the opposite direction. In this way, the MDMs used in conclusion first arguments and those MDMs used in conclusion last arguments are highlighted. When completed, the exercise appears as it does here. The example sentence showed the conclusion at the beginning of the argument, whereas the reconstructed text, there is a footprint near the window which indicates that the thief came in through the window, shows the conclusion at the end. In the classroom, the implementation of the text reconstruction exercise appeared like this. Students are seated in triads with the center student seated in front of and in control of the active computer. Students sometimes use the adjacent computers to look up words. An audio recording device was used to record student participants' discourse and utterances. My measurement of students' use of MDMs took two forms. One, quantitative, that is the frequency of the use of metadiscourse markers used in forums, chat rooms, a group written report, and an individual rewrite of that report in class. I also measured students' use of metadiscourse markers qualitatively in relation to the appropriacy of the use and their utterances made during reconstruction exercises. Details for quantitative measurement included the following metrics. The frequency of metadiscourse marker usage normalized per 100 words. The uh, count of explicitly and implicitly connective premise and conclusion markers. Also the same for conditional statement markers. And the variety of unique uses of metadiscourse markers within a single communicative function. I also accounted for the 
breadth of different communicative functions used in students' writing. As for qualitative measurements, I developed a scale for assessing the appropriacy of MDM use. This scale included four levels of appropriacy, beginning at one with unskilled and four with exceptional. At level one, students are clearly taking off boxes to use discourse markers to gain points with little concern for tone or coherence. Level two denotes essentially competent use, which one would expect to find in any given context. At level three of appropriacy, competent language use of the top markers that extends beyond the most rudimentary words and phrases in longer or more complex phrases is seen. And in level four, extended systems of meaning which span two or more sentences or an entire paragraph can be observed. During the text reconstruction exercise sessions, recording devices were used to record the utterances made by students during their work. This metric was used to triangulate with levels of appropriacy in order to draw a line between text reconstruction, expressions of explicit metalinguistic knowledge, and appropriate discourse marker use. If either rises in levels of appropriacy are not preceded by relevant utterances or relevant utterances are not followed by rises in level of appropriacy, then the claim for a causal link between text reconstruction exercises and any rises in the levels of appropriacy was considered as not supported, although also not disproven. Findings. In all of the output sources, like in the three forms above, word counts were collected. The output sources were divided into four frames, grouped by kind, and then numbered chronologically. Here we see frame 1, including asynchronous forums 1, 2, and 5. There were also frames 2, 3, and 4. Frame 2 contained forums 3 and 4. Frame 3 contained synchronous chat rooms 1 and 2. And frame 4 contained a group written report and an individually written in-class rewrite of that report. As seen here for frame 1, the frequency of metadiscourse marker use for each frame was calculated and normalized for every 100 words. I then gathered a count, normalized, of unique uses of MDMs shown here in gray along with the general MDM count in blue. Collecting a count for unique uses of MDMs was important as it distinguished repeated uses of, for example, so, from the use of other markers which mean the same thing, such as therefore, hence, and for that reason. The graph displays the average of all nine participants' unique use of MDMs in the nine output sources. Those are 
frame one, the use of three textbook issue-based forums, frame two, the next two, project-based forums, frame three, the next two, textbook issue-based chat rooms, and frame four, the last two, the group report and the individually written rewrite. Note that for each frame subsequent to each text reconstruction exercise, there is an increase in the unique use of MDMs except for the final timed individual rewrite, which nevertheless was greater than five of the eight other outputs. The next and perhaps most important metric was the count of both implicitly connective and explicitly connective premise and conclusion markers. In the first frame, although there are more implicit indicators, the use of explicit indicators rises steadily, as seen here. In frame two, where the task was to use conditional statements, the use of explicitly connective premise and conclusion markers decreased. However, this is explained by the increase on the right of explicitly connective conditional statement markers, which were the focus of those particular forums. Since there is limited textual real estate, so to speak, the conditional statement markers increase at the expense of the garden variety premise and conclusion indicators. In the chat rooms, where the discourse tended to be more conversational, there were fewer gains in the use of explicit markers, and students tended to revert to their previous use of implicit metadiscourse markers. In frame four, which involved the group report and the individual in-class rewrite of that report, although there was a decrease in the general use of markers, there was an increase in the use of both implicitly and explicitly connective conditional statement markers. Because, as Highland 2005 points out, Markers often carry out dual or multiple communicative functions. The greater increase in implicitly connective conditional statement markers is not regarded as a complete loss. It is enough that the use of explicitly connective conditional statement markers also increased to validate further research in this area. Here, I address the second research question regarding levels of appropriacy of metadiscourse marker usage. The graph shows levels of appropriacy for all nine participants averaged across the four frames of nine output sources. The viewer will notice two metrics, average appropriacy in blue and in orange, what I call high points. When averaging levels of appropriacy for each participant's discourse marker use in each output source, single cases of 
level four appropriacy were often lost in the background noise of so many level two or average assessments. For this reason, I show both the average levels of appropriacy and the high points in orange. As the graph shows, subsequent to each text reconstruction session, the levels of appropriacy of use increased. This table displays the consistency between the number of relevant utterances and levels of appropriacy of metadiscourse marker usage subsequent to those text reconstruction sessions. In this table, in the two columns labeled P1 through P9, P meaning participant, the right column shows the participants by number who made high, medium, and low numbers of utterances. The left column shows the participants by participant number who achieved high, medium, and low levels of appropriacy in their marker usage. The top half is concerned with our regular premise and conclusion markers, and the bottom half is concerned with conditional statement markers. In the top half, while there was no one-to-one -one correspondence, and there were some cases of inconsistency, for example, with participants 6 and 8, participants 2, 3, 7, and 9 clustered around both their high utterance counts and high levels of appropriacy. This suggests that there had been a positive causal relationship that merits further study. In the lower half of the table, the opposite was the case, with clustering around low utterance counts and low levels of appropriacy. This was consistent with the literature on this subject showing that Japanese find the formation of conditional statements to be difficult. This suggests that while the use of web sequitur type text reconstruction exercises may be effective for teaching the use of premises and conclusion markers, the use of web sequiturs for teaching the formation of conditional statements should be reconsidered. Either improvements should be made through redesign of the text reconstruction exercises, or a different kind of text manipulation should be applied for this purpose.